Archer Aviation, there's been ups and downs, but it's just a gift that keeps on giving. Right guys, I thought I'd jump on and do something a little bit different today. And it's a new sort of project I've started, and I think it's going to be quite exciting. But do let me know throughout how you feel about this. So I'm going to jump on and tell you all the major updates with Archer Aviation. I'm going to give my thoughts on it, and they're where I can see Archer going forward. But before we get into it, this is going to be very strange. It's something that I haven't really discussed much on the channel. But I have said I am a scientist by trade. And now that the channel has hit 2,000 subscribers, it's really made me think about herd mentality and the actual attention span of people. Because if you think it is my job to get the information and relay it back to you, but there's no point if people have lost attention. So I thought it'd be quite interesting to look at the average wealth bracket of people and what it's projected to be, and then look at their average attention span in terms of minutes. And that way, I'd be able to refine my videos for the bracket that suits you best. So I'm going to drop this graph here, and we can see people with the average attention span of seven minutes are projected to have a low wealth status, where the medium range is that of around 10 minutes. And the highly wealthy people seem to have a longer attention span. And really, this sort of resonates with the stock market. They stick with things and they make sure they understand it to the fullest. And that is 13 minutes. So what I might do today, throughout the video, at 7 minutes, I'll say the low wealth status drops off. At 10 minutes, your medium status. And if you surpass 13 minutes, well done to you. However, this is not financial advice. And in case anyone thinks I'm making this graph up, I'm willing to drop all the resources in the comment if anyone wants them. But anyway, you're here for Archer Aviation. So let's get on to it. So it's been an up and down month, really. And let's be honest, we've been flooded with news. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to break down all the recent news. And then we're going to see what's happening with Archer today and where we can see it going forward. So without further ado, let's jump into the first bit of news that happened. All right, guys, we've done many videos on the deep dives into all of this news. However, this can be a quick whistle stop tour on everything that's happened over the month. And then we'll get into everything today and what we can see going forward. So jumping back, we had that Archer partnership with Palantir. And really, this is for Palantir to use AIP to build the next generation aviation technologies. They're going to use it in the logistics to manufacturing side. But what I thought was most interesting is that link between basically what Elon Musk and Secretary Duffy has said about automating air traffic control. And I think this is going to be the game changer. And we can see the Palantir, Andrel, and then adding Archer into it. This is what everyone's excited about. But looking at this Palantir, and then jumping across further on into the news we'll discuss later with Ethiopian Airlines, I just think there is a big discussion to be had there. And we'll do it further on in the video. But guys, thinking about this, we've had people on X more or less say, Archer are doing good PR because they've become a customer of Palantir and more or less calling it a partnership. However, the relationship between Alex Karp and Adam Gold's team seems to be quite strong at the moment. And if you think, Archer Aviation is in its infant stage, and the eVTOL industry is projected to be trillion dollars. So is it not in Palantir's best interest to always give Archer the best deal? Because if you think, if they work hand in hand, Palantir is just going to generate more and more profit over the next foreseeable future. But this is a very important one. We're going to speak about Adam Goldstein. Adam Goldstein is in direct communications with the Hustle Brothers. One of our community is in constant contact with Adam Goldstein. So make sure to stay tuned on that one. 
So then we're going to jump across. Me and Reese done a really interesting video. And you're going to see that Mark E. Law is highlighted here. So if you want to see the top five shareholders in Archer Aviation, make sure to check out that video. But I'm here to talk about Mark E. Law. The reason I'm speaking about Mark E. Law is because there was a few queries going around our community at the time. And there was confusion whether Mark E. Law had a higher percentage, whether he had zero shares. But to my understanding, this information is correct. And I want to thank one of our members, Cole, who shared that with us live on the stream. But we verified it and we believe that Marky e. Law still owns 5.15% and 27 million shares. And if he sold it at the value it was at 872 at time of recording, it would have been 243 0.52 million. Now, I think the confusion was back in January, he did sell a substantial position because he did used to be one of the highest, if not the highest. I believe it was around the 10% mark. But look, doing a quick dive over that, I knew Stellantis was going to be the top. BlackRock, I'm not too bullish on because they seem to be just investing in everything. We've mentioned Virgin Galactic. But the biggest takeaway from this video was retail was 33.37%. And does it raise the question that retail actually may move the market? We've seen during the Q4 earnings call, there was major panic. And we started seeing people sell off left, right and centre. Me and Reese have said, going forward, we're going to make our earnings calls a little bit earlier, maybe half an hour or so, and warn people of different scenarios that may happen during the call. However, we are not financial advisors and you do everything at your own risk. However, chats after them seem to be able to calm down the market and we're able to more or less discuss with all the specialists we have in our community and we can all collaborate. But then jumping across, we have that Ethiopian Airlines partnership and this is valued at 30 million. Now, 30 million is not the biggest partnership Archer is going to do. And originally, it made me a little bit skeptical because were Ethiopian Airlines going to provide the Verta ports? If so, maybe it's not a bad deal. However, if 30 million is just to sell the midnight aircraft and Archer still have to make the foundation, my biggest worry was Archer will do all the work and then Joby will just come into the continent of Africa. However, I am really bullish on Archer going into Africa. Me and Reese have discussed this. Really, we want to see it in every major country, if not every country in the world. Look, we know they're getting into the US. We have the United Arab Emirates. There's plans for India. I know they're going to get into Europe. So really, Africa is just another string to their bow. We then had a bit of a discussion on maybe Africa might be less stringent when it comes to aviation regulations. This is nothing against the African aviation, but I just, from my own thoughts, believe that the FAA is one of the most stringent. So the more place you can get into and test your flight data and software, the better. And this is where I'm going to bring in my earlier point about Palantir. Is this an opportunity? to refine all your data and bring a substantial amount of data back to the FAA and basically say, look, we've done the flight tests. Here they are. Away we go. Sign us off. It does make me think, though, why are Archer not registering customers in the US with the hope of getting this certification over the line? We did see a video pop up and I can't share it on here just because I'll get banged for copyright. But it was more or less of Archer's final design of Midnight. And I really think that they've went into extreme detail and into the minutes. The bit that gets me is the front nose that they said they'd done it vertical because it would just fit better with this is a vertical takeoff vehicle. The fact that they have that much attention to detail and are considering just the aesthetics of Midnight, I just think this is a company well worth investing in. However, 
do your own due diligence. I'm not advising anyone to invest in anything. So then jumping across, and I might say there, we've lost our low wealth status and we're about to lose our medium wealth status. However, anyone that's staying on beyond this point is getting into a high wealth status mindset. So then, I then teased a video about Archer and full self-driving. Now, I never released this video because I had a discussion on Evital Weekly and I just didn't think I had enough information on full self-driving and Archer to create a long-form video that is worth it for the lot of you. However, I just want to say, in relation to Archer and Tesla's full self-driving, I believe that these are more or less going to be hand in hand. They're not going to be competition. Look, we've said it before. We have the bikes, the line bikes. They never affected Uber. Look, they're two different use cases. Same here. This is ground transportation versus aerial transportation. I said personally, I can drive across to Reese in the UK. I can just get a ferry across. But why do I fly? For ease and for speed. It might not always be financially the best option, but for ease and speed, that's where you go. And that's where Archer is going to make its money. Look, having full self-driving cars, Reese made a really good point on the live stream. You're still going to have the same amount of cars on the road. So Archer's just bypassing all that. And we think, really, the full self-driving is going to be targeted at people going to work, people going to shops. Look, you're not going to fly to your shops. However, if you're going to an airport or an important business meeting, or look, you just want a little bit of luxury, you are going to pay the premium price and go with Archer. So then, jumping across to our channel, I then discussed something quite close to my heart, and it was a story about my dad. I'm not going to get into it in this video. Thank you for all the comments. I just thought I'd say that now because I really didn't expect that much people to show their appreciation. So really mad. This month, we have surpassed that 2K subscriber. So if you're still here and you're not subscribed, make sure to bang that subscribe button because we're just going to keep on growing. And then I have another bit of news for you. So one thing we've started pushing out more and more is our X community. So we are the only investor community on X. And it's under Archer Aviation Community. We currently have 84 members, but I am making my utmost attempt to start generating more and more active members to come to this community. Look, if it's to share your thoughts, just how you're feeling about Archer, it might be able to have a place where it gets rid of all that noise. But anyway, guys, you've made it to the high wealth range. And if you want to see Evital Weekly, make sure to check out this video next.